So it's time to have an honest conversation about why so many of us choose to run Linux as our operating system. And while many of us choose Linux because of the freedom aspect, it's all about free and open source software. That's certainly why I run Linux is because I'm a free and open source software enthusiast and I demand freedom with my software. I want to take control of my digital life and free and open source software and especially the GNU slash Linux operating system gives me that freedom. And while those of us that are free and open source software enthusiasts, while we're you know, not necessarily an insignificant portion of the Linux community. I do think we are a minority because I think most people choose to run Linux mainly because it is free as in cost. It's free as in free of charge. Many people just want to save money and there's nothing wrong with that. In many cases, I think the Linux world, especially those of us that are Linux content creators, we've always kind of steered away from pointing out the fact that Linux is free of cost, right? Because we wanted to hammer home the freedom aspect rather than the free of cost aspect because we didn't want Linux to, we didn't want this thing to seem like it was all about just trying to be cheap and save money. But let's be real, many of us, the reason we run Linux is because we're trying to save a little money. And I love the fact that Linux is free of charge because I think one of the, the areas many people need help with in life is they need to start saving money and they need to stop spending money frivolously, right? They, they're just blowing all kinds of money on useless things. And for most people, they don't have any kind of savings. Don't, they don't have any kind of retirement. And of course, that's a much bigger topic. You know, that's probably something I need to do over on my financial YouTube channel rather than this channel. But I do think it's important that people don't spend thousands of dollars every year on software when we have this great free and open source software available free of charge. And it's not just the fact that free and open source software is free of charge. In many cases, you're not just saving on the software, you're also saving money on the hardware. When you choose Linux as your operating system rather than Windows or Mac OS, you save money on computers, on PCs, because you don't have to upgrade to the latest and greatest computer every time Windows has a major update, right? With the people that were running Windows 7, in many cases, had to buy a new computer in order to run Windows 10 and in order to run Windows 11 and whatever the next version of Windows that comes out, you know, people have to upgrade hardware for that. Same thing with Mac OS. Sometimes on the major updates, you need to actually just go buy a new MacBook, for example, you know, because the new operating system requires too many system resources for that older MacBook that you're still trying to use. And this is the beautiful thing about Linux is Linux compared to Mac and especially Windows is really light on resources. I have machines, I have laptops that are seriously 15 years old that Linux runs on, right? There are certain Linux distributions out there that are especially geared to older machines. And you can have these 10 year old, 12 year old, 15 year old computers in some cases running practically flawlessly on Linux. There's no way you could have any modern version of Windows, I'm talking about Windows 7, 10, or 11, on a 15-year-old computer. That's an impossibility. It's not going to happen. And of course, you save on the operating system itself, right? Because you don't have to pay for the operating system. You also don't have to pay for the operating system upgrades like you do, you know, when Windows pushes out the next major version or Mac OS pushes out the next major version. You don't have to spend that uh, 50 bucks, 100 bucks, whatever price they charge for the next major upgrade. Of course, all upgrades are free on Linux. If I want to upgrade my Arch Linux system right now, I just do a Pac-Man SYU and, and away I go. I'm, it looks like I've got a couple of things I could update. I'm not gonna take that update on camera, but it's a free of charge upgrade. And of course, here on Arch Linux, every time I update the system, I am on the absolute latest version of Arch Linux there is, right? And for those of you running static release distributions, something like Ubuntu, for example, or Debian or Linux Mint, they do push out major upgrades like every six months, every year, every two years, whatever it happens to be. All of those major upgrades are free of charge, and you're not going to get that with Windows or Mac. And in my opinion, the area where you're going to save the most amount of money has nothing to do with saving on hardware, which you will with Linux, or saving on the operating system cost, which obviously you will if you choose to run Linux. But where you save the most money 
is actually all the other software that you run on Linux. Because when you choose to run Linux as your main operating system, your primary operating system, you're going to learn about all of this wonderful free and open source software. You're gonna learn about this amazing world of free and open source software. For example, you might learn about LibreOffice. LibreOffice is a free and open source alternative to something like Microsoft Office, for example. And it's fantastic, right? It is absolutely fantastic. It's got your word processor, it's got your spreadsheet program, it's got your uh, presentation program. I, I use all of them all the time. And it is just a truly fantastic piece of free and open source software. So in some ways you're gonna save money because if you were paying for, for example, the desktop client for the Microsoft Office suite, you may choose to migrate over to LibreOffice. You may even find that you prefer LibreOffice to Microsoft Office. One of my favorite pieces of free and open source software is GIMP. I have been a GIMP user for about 20 years. I actually discovered GIMP when I was still a Windows user, but I didn't want to pay for some of the proprietary uh, uh, image editors, things like Photoshop and Paint Shop Pro and all that stuff back in the day. And GIMP was around even back then, free and open source software, and I fell in love with it. And in fact, me learning GIMP on Windows made the transition for me eventually leaving Windows for Linux. It made that transition easier because when I got to Linux, of course, Linux is all about free and open source software, things like GIMP, things like LibreOffice, things like Mozilla Firefox for the browser. And it really, you know, I, was, I had already kind of started slowly making that transition over to Linux by using all of these fantastic pieces of free and open source software. And if I was really going to sit down and try to calculate how much money I've saved in the last, say, 15 years since I've switched to using Linux primarily as the operating system of all of my computers, it would probably, we're, we're talking thousands of dollars in savings easily thousands of dollars of savings, possibly in the tens of thousands of dollars in savings, not just again on the hardware, on the operating system costs, but also on some of those subscription model pieces of software, things like Photoshop, or, or Microsoft Office, things like that, that maybe I would be locked in to steal some of that proprietary software if I was still running Windows. And while I think content creators like myself, you know, I, I we should still promote free and open source software as being all about freedom, right? We should talk about the four freedoms of free software, the ability to use the software, modify the software, redistribute the software, yada, 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 right? We should, we should be able to look at the source code, but we need to not just focus solely on the freedom aspect because honestly, people that are using Windows, They've never heard about the free software movement. They don't care. Right? Even if you brought them that message, they, they might be interested. They might not. But you know what? Each and every one of those people that are still running Windows are interested in saving money. So there's nothing wrong with us talking about how Linux actually saves you potentially thousands of dollars over your lifetime. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this show. Matt, James, Steve, Armor Dragon, Darlof, Daylist, GDR, George, Lee, Matthew, Mythos, Urian, Paul, Peace, Arch, and Fedora, Realities, Realist, Red Prophet, Roland, Soul Astry, Tianwen, Roar, Gentoo, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this little rant would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon. I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.